If I told you that this was Paget's disease of the breast, of the nipple of the breast, of the nipple of the skin of the breast, which like skin everywhere else is stratified squamous epithelium, you would believe me and you would be fooled. Uh, but it is classically looking like Paget's disease. You can see all these Paget cells like we saw in our nipple case. You can see that it's skin. You can see that the overlying uh, area is uh, keratinized, the stratum corneum. And it looks exactly like the Paget's disease we saw in the nipple. And you would say, because you now believe that this is breast, that, uh, well, the woman should have a mastectomy because even if we don't see any cancer in the underlying breast that's infiltrating, we all know that there's an extremely high, perhaps 50, 70, 90, 95 percent correlation between finding these Paget cells in the skin and an underlying deeper malignancy. Well, this is not from the breast. This is from the vulva. You can also have Paget's disease of the vulva as well. And like Paget's disease of the breast, it's going to be most likely uh, associated with uh, underlying infiltrating malignancy somewhere. But if you look in this uh, vulvar uh, uh, piece of tissue here, the underlying connective tissue doesn't have any infiltrating carcinoma. It has hair follicles, it has sweat glands, it has reticular dermis, it has papillary dermis, it has a little bit of inflammation. But all these Paget cells, these little buckshot things you see in here, which sometimes are confused with melanomas, um, are limited to the uh, epidermis. So this is just to show you that although we talk about Paget's disease as almost knee-jerk reflex following the word nipple. You can also have it in the vulva as well. Thank you very much.